Why don't we do this? Why don't you guys go down the line, say who you are, your company, what you do, and we'll go from there. I'll start. I'm Josh Rocklin. I am the CEO of a company called Text, spelled T-E-C-K-S-T. -E we are the leading platform for enterprise messaging for the customer care use case. So if you lose something in a lift or you want to know something about your Lord and Taylor or Ann Taylor package, that's going over our platform. But it's a great opportunity for marketing once you get customer care right. Hello, my name is Travis Montague. I'm the founder and CEO of Emoji, with a G. Um, Emoji powers animated stickers uh, in leading chat, dating, gaming applications, keyboards. We're in over a billion messages a day. And uh, yeah, that's us. Hi, I'm Katie Wilson. I'm the founder and CEO of Tap On It. We are a text message marketing company out of Iowa. Um, we build databases of people who 100% opt in to be sent offers and promotions from local businesses and brands via text. So basically we text pictures of ads to people who signed up to be texted ads. Um, from there they can link into a browser where they are able to share offers, earn bonus offers, redeem them at the location, and a whole lot of other stuff. So really high redemption rates, really high organic growth through sharing and uh, negative net churn. Uh, my name is Jason Oates. Is this working? Okay. Um, so Jason Oates from Live Intent. Uh, we took you know all the best advertising technology and married it up into probably you know one of the best marketing technologies, email. So we brought all the ad tech into the world of email, and currently uh, it has an ad server exchange and DSP in the email world. We serve about 2,500 publishers and reach 250 million people every month, which puts us about the size of Facebook in the U.S. I'm Alex Magnan. I'm the head of revenue at Giphy. Uh, we put the GIFs in all your favorite apps. And just for the record, I like Giphy, not Jiffy. Giphy. <laughs> Giphy. Um, so this is a panel about the future of advertising and audience growth and messaging, and I've got one question. Why? Why do we want advertising and messaging? <laughs> I probably don't. Um, <laughs> Uh, we want to talk to our friends in messaging. Uh, we want like content that can help us do that. Uh, we want to talk about things uh, inside those apps. Um, so you know, like if a behavior is super intentional, you're much less receptive to interruptive advertising. Right? The advertising has to have value. It's marketing, you know. Yeah, I think the advertising experience is just different in okay. messaging. And so when you, when you say, like, why would, would you want advertising and messaging, we, most people will probably think about it in a traditional sense. Mm -hmm. But the reality is the brands that people use is part of their self-expression. And so when they're talking to someone, they actually would prefer to use maybe a Starbucks piece of content to express when they want coffee, more so than a standard, icon, uh, standard emoji coffee cup or using the words alone. So we're looking at advertising then perhaps a little differently than what you're used to, is what you're saying, right? So it's not getting bombarded with messages, belly fat ads, or um, brand awareness campaigns or whatever jargon we want to push out. But it's the ease of use of shorthand that a brand can attach themselves to. So if I want a donut, I send a Dunkin' Donuts logo to my friend? No, so you could still do the same type of marketing initiatives that you want. For example, I could still do a brand awareness campaign in a messaging environment. So like if we look at an example of us working with Mucinex, for example, and they wanted to reach consumers when they're feeling sick, right? We could, we could surface we could surface Mucinex brand in relevant conversations when people were feeling well. Yeah. Now, when you compare that to a classical um, experience, uh -huh. if a person's in the state of being sick, they can't normally, like, they might not search for it immediately if they're sick at that moment. They might not post it on social media, but they tell their friends or they tell their loved ones or they tell someone. And so messaging because it's so intent driven, provides an opportunity for a brand like Mucinex to, be, to drive top of mind awareness and be a part of that conversation in a really pr playful way uh, in, in an environment or at a moment that they weren't able to participate in before. So do brands have a right to be part of that conversation? 
Well, when it's, um, at least in the case of it being like search and intent based, uh, the user decides, right? It's like, it's just with Google search, right? You do a search for an, an, an emoji or a GIF. But what was the last, you, what was the last uh, Google ad that you remember? Well, I certainly clicked on some, especially if I don't like the company. I'll be like, oh, you got to pay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, but yeah, so like, they, like um, when you're doing a search, uh, that's intentional. And then you are literally choosing to show the Taco Bell GIF or the Mucinex emoji to your friend. But if you don't like it, click an organic one. That's right. all good, too. And like, Katie, your model of being yeah, you're, you're 100% different. opt-in, <laughs> yeah, right? It's, like, it's I am... That's exactly right. So we are 100% opt-in based. So the people who sign up for a tap on it are actually saying, I want to be texted offers and promotions from local businesses, from brands. And uh, you had made the comment to me backstage that people will actually do that. And um, that's the same thing that I got when I was uh, pitching Wait, how investors. Many, <laughs> how many people here would text a brand on purpose? <laughs> More than half the time. Without, without a reward. How many people are marketers? <laughs> okay, I, interesting. I mean, what, yeah. what, how many people, though, if you were able to opt in to receive offers and promotions from lots of different brands in your area, whether it's restaurants, entertainment, retail, would sign up for that? Okay, and if I sent you a free Chick fil A sandwich through that, would you sign up then? And then would you tell your friends about it? Because, I mean, that's exactly how we grow, is we get people to sign up because we only send out quality, and then they tell their friends. Right. Cool. I think what, what most of these companies have in common is it's about utility in messaging, and the advertising comes from the utility to the user, which is the reason they want to either get it via text or share it via text, even if it's marketing. I also think there's a clear roadmap you know, for this. I mean, email started as pure text. There was no imagery, there was nothing. You were texting back and forth, and usually it was people you knew. It was your friends. Evolution is always the same. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to media, uh, you move into, like, there's an entire massive medium that's deterministic, and as the cookie apocalypse comes, which is coming very soon within the next two quarters, you're not going to be able to actually use cookies to do all your targeting. So email and text, both deterministic opt-in messages, the only people that are going to get stuff are the people that opt in to get it. And it's not about advertising. It's marketing. Advertising is subset, but the other part's relationship building. So people will opt in and they have the right to, to say, I would prefer you to actually not email me. I would prefer you text me. And giving people the option is the most intelligent choice. One of the things we're seeing is because there's so many different channels your eye is blurring as to whether or not that I get that through my iChat client, that I get it through WhatsApp, that I get it through Messenger. And the, the reinforcement of brands within those experiences, we're seeing it. We're on the other side, right? We're not doing outbound. We're getting inbound. And we're seeing that Chanel wants to go out with its brand because it gives them an opportunity after receiving permission to communicate. Lyft the same way. They can say, you know, we're sorry about that charge, and here's a coupon. So they're figuring out how to make that initial customer care into an opportunity for a continuous conversation. I think that's the permission that you're talking about. Do you, do you all feel, in a sense, hamstrung um, as being reliant on other companies in the sense that without Apple, without Google, without Facebook, that the model is not, not that it's not sustainable, but it's, it's a little bit different than email or other types of platforms, right? Because you have to be wholly reliant on Apple saying, you know what, we're gonna allow you into our system. Google, same thing. Facebook, same thing. How did that affect I have, your businesses? I, I have two answers to that. So the first piece is, um, I mean, you could say the thing that you could ask Uber the same question, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. And so I, I don't really look at that as a challenge. I think that we're going to exist in these environments. The second piece to that is messaging is largely categorical mm -hmm. and it splits into the app ecology is categorical and then there's the app ecology and messaging infrastructure, which mm -hmm. a lot of people know about the apps, but they don't know about the infrastructure. Okay. So on the top side of that, when you look at the app ecology, there's chat, which there's big platforms like the Facebooks of the world, the WeChats, the Limes, the Microsoft platforms. 
there's productivity, there's gaming, there's dating. So there's a whole, what, what the most exciting piece of the Horde deal is that we're seeing more experiences overall become conversational. And so that's really important to note. The second piece of that is the messaging app infrastructure. So there's keyboards and carriers and other people who are involved in the matter as well. And so you could be part of a Facebook conversation without even having to be integrated into Facebook, right, is the big point, is the big mm -hmm. kind of message there. And so I think the, it is more fragmented and more of an ecosystem than most real people realize. And then that gives an opportunity, that gives us the ability to find a lot of opportunities to become integrated into the environment in unique ways. And then how do you monetize all this? So there is many different monetization models that you could follow for us at Emoji. Uh, today we are monetizing via advertising. Um, so we will work with leading CPG companies, fast casual, QSR, entertainment companies who want to reach consumers in these various moments. And how our technology works, we are able to analyze each message that happens on a platform and make recommendations about content should the user want to use it in real time. And so, give you another example, um, we'll t we just wrapped up something with Mars, right? And for their Snickers brand, who as an extension of their uh, You're Not Yourself When You're Hungry campaign, wanted to reach consumers in specific moments, right? And so, e e emotional mood states. And so we were able to target specific mood states for that brand, measure the engagement of that, and also, be, and also report back to them how in the con various contexts that their content was used. In addition to that, back to why advertising and messaging, we actually on, uh, kind of asked a broad baseline on our platform see branded content being used 2.7 times more than organic content. And the reason, you know, our, our, the reason why that is is because brands mean something to people and they want to use them. And so I think these types of data points give us, makes us really excited about where the world is going because brands are welcome and wanted in conversations if, they're, if it's done so in a way that's respectful to the brand. So just by example, we've seen the double-edged sword of that where somebody mentions Winnie the Pooh and all of a sudden you have a poo icon right, that's right. appeared there. So, that, so that you gotta actually, be really careful. So we've only got two minutes left and I understand that you know, there's a lot going on here. Um, but following up on that, and this is for, for everyone, is this balance between privacy and monetization. Because you are dealing with something that is more important in our society than our social security numbers. Right. How do you balance that? That, that's where AI and machine learning come in. Yeah. You know, if, if you've got literally you know, thousands of, of marketers that are actually have a real-time bid and you're using AI to actually match the right kind of offer to the right person, um, let the machines figure it out. A human's not going to be able to figure that out. And you need a large marketplace for the advertising side. And the person who's going to win is probably the person who already has a relationship with that consumer. Um, and is able to bid up a little bit more because that person maybe is coming off lease in the next month or two months and they drive a GM and GM's going to pay more than anybody else for that. So I think that just like the open web and RTB and programmatic, exactly what's happening on the web will happen in, is happening in email and will happen in messaging. So that's also not great, right? I mean, I, I, it's, it's, uh, I don't think it's a terrible thing to actually give people what they're most, have the highest propensity to actually click on and convert on. Cool. Yeah, I was going to say permission is one of the biggest yeah. things. You know, I mean, that really is, as long as people are opting in, you're sending them what they signed up to be sent. Um, and for monetization on the tap on it side, it's free to the consumers, message and data rate supply. And other than that, you know, people are... Uh, um, the businesses are paying to reach the consumers the same way that they would have paid for a postcard to hit a mailbox, except for it's more direct, it's opt-in based, it's 99% open rate, and from there they can take all of these additional actions. Plus, they're not going to throw it away because it's their cell phone. I think I think there's a big thing around. So, when you when you go into the the topic of privacy, so the first things first is what users believe privacy is. Right? And so at Emoji, we have a research team uh, on the West Coast, and, is ded and part of that team is dedicated to just focusing on privacy preservation. So we don't want to, even though we analyze messages, we don't want to understand certain things about you, like your political views, all these other things that we don't mm -hmm. need to understand. Also, you need to uh, define the types of businesses that you should be in as a company and the types of business you shouldn't be in. 
but also the, and so that's what a lot of the major tech platforms struggle with, right? Just because you can't do something doesn't mean you should. And the last thing yeah, there sure. is um, when, you, when people think about privacy, they actually are more concerned about the people on the other end and their stuff getting out there and, and biting them in the ass 20 years from now. Um, they're not as concerned about the platforms, except for special cases. Um, there's implicit trust. Cool. Well, and let me just add one thing. The nice thing about like you know, the, this world is you can also opt out. Right. right. And if you're tracking what you're doing and you've got an opt out rate of like one percent in a given period or two percent, like you've got a problem. Right. And so you can easily look at these things and say, if we're causing problems and people don't like what they're getting, they are going to leave us. Right. And so I think that's something that you take. And you're looking at complaint rates, so you have to look at a balanced scorecard approach of all the things that you're looking at, and you're going to know whether or not you're pissing people off or not. And this is why I get burner phones. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.